Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about when we use lower training volumes that it is important that your set quality be very, very high. Now, all through this, this is just some uh, some training clips throughout the week. Uh, none of these sets are actually to muscle failure, but they are all very close, other than this training max, right? This, this I could have done some reps with. But all the rest, uh, maybe a rep from failure, right? About one rep from failure. Um, and I'm not telling people you have to go to failure. When we talk about set quality and training hard, uh, people misunderstand that because a lot of people, they'll act like they want to, they're, they're training hard, but what they're training hard is taking an isolation movement and doing four reps or something or a drop set on it after they reach failure, okay? First of all, it's an isolation movement. Uh, it's not growing a lot of muscle. It's growing one muscle probably. And sets beyond failure don't actually seem to really cause any, any extra muscle growth. In other words, just doing a set of curls to failure, if we go off how we know muscle fiber recruitment works, we know how mechanical tension works, uh, doing forced reps, doing rest pause reps with all this stuff, drop sets, probably isn't causing any muscle growth in the fast twitch fibers. It, it's zero. It might, in some cases, some of the intermediate fibers, depending upon how advanced you are, right? So when, when people do this, they're probably not gaining any muscle over just going to failure or stopping with zero reps in reserve, as in, like you watch some of these, these sets, like watch these extensions, I could not have gotten another rep, okay? This was my last set. I'm straining, see the form breaking on that last set, that very, very last rep. Had I gone for one more without resting a few seconds first, I probably would have failed it, okay? Same thing with this, this set of squats. Uh, this, is, this is 375. So you'll notice on these, this is relatively heavy. It feels like even for my, <laughs> all, all the reps, you know, just because it's a significant amount of weight. But as you watch it, notice that my form degrades on the last rep, okay, more than the others. I'm, I'm maintaining a, a good posture and everything all the way through, getting depth. But as I get right near the end, uh, getting more forward lean, the form is breaking down more. So that's an example of that's, that's it. That's where we would stop. You know, and, and we have to talk about these big movements because, because again, this is where most of our muscle growth comes from. So every time we do this and people say, well, I train hard, but then you watch their big exercises. Yeah, you guys aren't, aren't training your big movements like that, right? They'll, they'll do all these drop sets and all this stuff with one small exercise. I don't see you guys doing that on your squats and deadlifts, okay? Right? I don't see them doing that on their pull-ups. Of course they're not. Because they're not really training hard. And, and all of your, your work should be generally uh, to, to that amount of set quality. Right? Those last reps, even on your big exercises, should be really hard. I'm not saying you should be taking them to failure. Okay? I'm not saying you should take a pair. I think pull-ups is if I like to go right, right to that, to where that last rep really is kind of a missed rep, right? Where you can't quite get up to the top with it, you know. But uh, you'll see people who do that and they think that they're training hard. And it's like, no, because then they push out on their big stuff, you know. They push out on their big stuff. And they don't push those sets very hard. And they do, they'll do they do it on the small exercises. But that's what I'm saying. Most of our training is going to be the big movements. And keep in mind, I do isolation work. right? I isolate multiple muscles. My muscles that need the most work get isolated. You know, things like my arms, my biceps, my triceps, all of that. Of course I do. They need it. A lot of times my side delts, maybe my quads. Uh, because, again, they need it. So I'm not telling people that isolation work doesn't matter or not to do it, because I do it, I prescribe it. So what we see though is that people will push out on the big movements. And I see that a lot with guys who are trying to do lower volumes of training. Like if you're doing uh, you know, less than 10 sets a week for a muscle group, you better be pushing every set. 
if you want to get good gains from it. Okay? If you want to get good gains from it. And I'm going to say you, you need to be picky on what exercises you do. Your movements better be real efficient. Okay? Uh, especially if you're going to drop down to something like six sets. Because we do see that. And I've seen experts, I've seen even Dr. Mike and other people say, yeah, you can, you can actually make good gains on that, but you better be training hard. Right? You better be training hard. And probably if we're talking you know, six sets for a muscle, this is where I'm going to say there probably should be some isolation work in that case. Right? Especially for weak links. Yeah? Because if you think you're going to do just pull-ups and, and build big biceps on that low volume, uh, probably not going to happen. Unless you were just that gifted. Right? If you're really gifted genetically in the biceps, okay. But, you know, back over to the point, uh, the, these sets need to be hard. And your big exercises do too, if we're going to do lower volumes. You know, your squats and deadlifts need to be hard. Uh, and what I don't like to see that we say hard deadlifts, people start using bad form, they start bouncing the weight. Now I'm talking real deadlifts, right? Same thing with our squats. Uh, they better be hard if you're going to run lower volumes. So what you're seeing here is about what you want. And again, notice that hard means till stuff starts to degrade, okay? Doesn't mean you're doing crappy, sloppy reps. And, and, and I really hate that. I really hate when people start just doing, uh, you know, partials and things or, or too much cheating uh, and thinking that it's a hard set because of it. Uh, in some cases, the cheating can be a little bit if you need it for the last couple reps. Absolutely. In some cases, especially on some smaller movements, some of these big movements, uh, no, not really. Right? You're just risking injury. It's just being silly. But we should have set quality. So rather than talk about all oh, sets need to be all out or super hard, um, I would rather us look at it from the perspective of set quality. Did you do some real quality work there? Okay. Did you really get to those deep muscle fibers on that set? And if you're going to do low volumes, you have to do that with every set. Okay? Every set needs to be high quality. Or you're just not going to maximize muscle growth. And if you can't do that, then you probably are one of the people who needs higher volumes of training. Right? Because a lot of people, not everyone is, is really wired for that. They can't seem to get set quality in. Okay, in that case, more volume absolutely will make sense for you in that case. All right, guys, but well, that's really uh, all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.